Let's start with uh, this quotation, not because I, I, I like the quotation, but, uh, well, uh, the contrary. Uh, I, I really think that the presentation with quotation are always boring, but I start with this just for you to remember then at the end when you start to criticize my presentation, you have to remember what Bourdieu said, no? That it's an unthinkable object, and so in some way you can be lenient in your criticism. Because in some way I, I started to, to think about the state just a few uh, months ago, and so this is uh, really something that is not uh, possible to do in a so um, um, short time. Um, What, what I want to also share with you is the way in which I arrived to think about the state. That is not through my research on degrowth, but mm, on my research on, as a political ecologist uh, and uh, my research related, uh, related to landslides that, and flooding that uh, also are occurring. I have heard uh, in the last period in Croatia a lot, and ma making a big disaster. So I was... Um, uh, after just after my my PhD, uh, I I start to work uh, in a project that was uh, looking at different case studies about human security, uh, vulnerability, adapti adaptability, climate change. So the the focus of the whole project of European project was about human security, and um, they were looking at you know how. We protect in some way, or we are able to um, um, give the local community uh, the endowment to, to face with future problems uh, related to climate change. So, of course, the main uh, worries were about uh, the freedom from fear, the freedom for wants, desire, and uh, giving dignity. Um, in, the, in this context, it was really interesting to me to think about the way in which vulnerability studies were facing uh, this idea of uh, the threat that are coming from climate change and the way in which uh, uh, many sociologists, many prominent sociologists, among one among them, the uh, Bauman, uh, that were thinking about uh, the, the, the foundational uh, motivation of the state, what, what, uh, the, uh, the raison d'etre uh, of the state. And he was saying that basically the state was uh, taught and developed uh, exactly to, to um, as a promise to the citizen uh, to, to, um, to protect them from different threats that are uh, exactly the way the, the same threat that now the vulnerability and adaptability uh, scholarship are pointing out uh, fa um, in the future facing the climate change. Uh, but the, the, the really interesting things is that um, those, those sociology that are, you know, uh, in some way um, very influential in the 70, 80, 80s, they were thinking about the role of the state, are now uh, completely uh, disappearing from uh, the global environmental change studies, let's say, in some way. Because uh, what they are saying is that we have to face the same problem, but not with uh, uh, the capacity of uh, state organization, but as an individual, or sometimes as a community, you know, as a civil society that is endowed. So this is very interesting, no? because in some way, uh, what was the welfare state, what was uh, uh, the main um, aim of the welfare state, now became uh, a restriction of it and, and became, uh, the, um, let's say, the security state. This, is, this was interesting to me, because in some way, this is uh, strictly related to, to what neoliberal and liberalism is thinking about the state and uh, they the political neutrality is one of the book uh, where more influential uh, uh, thinkers of liberalism are uh, explaining why why the state should be neutral 
And this is very interesting because the neutrality of the state is not something only of liberal nowadays, but I think it's something that uh, um, hegemonic in, uh, in, in the society because many times, also from what uh, uh, is defined as the civil society, also there is uh, this sort of uh, thinking of state or relation with the state as a neutral state as a simple uh, um, organization that enable you but don't uh, give you some direction to think about what is the good life how to you get to the good life no how you in some way uh, react to the threat of of humanity so in some way what, what was uh, striking to me during these uh, studies was exactly the fact that uh, in some way we can um, not only see in, the, in, in global environmental change scholarship but also in the civil society a, a drift toward uh, the neutral state, no? the st a state that just is worried about safety but in a very uh, concrete terms related to the bodies and to the, the assets, so the so the ownership, okay. And this is is of course is what we in uh, we now I'm speaking about in general of the European we experienced in the last 25, 30 years. So <coughs> the shrinking of the welfare state toward. Uh, the security state, let's say, a state that reacts as a state of emergency that is there only when the problems are related to bodies, life and assets that are destroyed by different calamities. No? And this is also interesting because the way in which we are now experiencing the state is as, uh, uh, strongly related to the way in which the catastrophes related to climate change and all the global environmental change are also played out in many political uh, contexts. So, uh, basically, the, the, the vulnerability scholarship in the side, and, and even if, let's say that they uh, were not liberal as a, uh, as, a, um, uh, as a citizen, but also as a political scientist, uh, in some way they were supporting something that was uh, in line with the neoliberal uh, thinking. Why, why it happened? Because the way in which they, they think about the state in a specific context of vulnerability or climate disaster or environmental disaster was uh, the state as an actor, okay, as an entity. So uh, as an entity that normally acts uh, in a particular way and damaging also or repressing the local community that are affected. No? For example, imposing certain kind of decision, imposing a resettlement, imposing some uh, certain kind of policies and so on and so far. So the state always is a coercive power, is a coercive force that in some way go there as an actor, as a great power, powerful actor, go there and um, in some way uh, decide on over the life of the people. Um, indeed, in what, what vulnerability uh, studies were trying to, to show is that uh, um, the way in which the people are able to cope with the, with the risk and uncertainty is when the state uh, all only enable, empower local community to face with problem, but don't take political stance on how on the future of the of that territory. No? So uh, theoretically one of the of, of the problem that is related to the way in which there was this uh, ideological adrift of uh, vulnerability scholars were related to the fact that probably they were treating the state as a thing, as an entity and but not as a is a, um, a complex relation between actor in civil society, uh, um, economic actor, social actor, and, um, and that are able also to occupy the political space. So th this interrelation, this is sliding door that often we know how they work, 
uh, they were not theorized enough. No? Uh, so there, there were not uh, mm, any investigation on the relation between you know, the specific actor that was uh, responding to a, an environmental um, disaster and the political um, institution that were intervening in that uh, area. This is why, uh, in some way, uh, I, I, I start to criticize uh, those, those um, approach uh, because many times the, mal the maladaptation, that is like adaptation that uh, um, solve the problem now but uh, can uh, create more uh, complicated problem in the future, uh, were perceived as a, something that was coming from this kind of uh, imposition from political authorities on the local community. But what I was trying to show in the case that I, I, I studied in my region was that uh, many times the, uh, the maladaptive policies were not against the civil society, but were just to, uh, to respond to the demand of civil society uh, that they were implementing certain kind of policies. So uh, there was not an imposition, but was uh, uh, the ability of political uh, institution to play with demand, to respond to the demand of civil society that created maladaptation. Okay. Uh, so we can say that there was this interplay between private interest and political decision that created maladaptation, but not the imposition of policies from the political uh, board. Uh, and of course, this dynamic, uh, what I was uh, criticizing is that this dynamic is not possible to, to address if you don't have a, um, a proper theory of state in order to look at the, the, how the, this relation uh, played out and which kind of power relation are, um, are uh, um, used uh, and abused in order to, to get some responses to uh, environmental catastrophe. So this is why I, I uh, then I suggest to, to, to look at uh, the way in which Gramsci were uh, theorizing uh, about the state. So the basic things was that the, the vulnerability study were uh, playing the, the role of uh, blaming in some way the state to have a safety state, only state that react to uh, individual and so was asking to uh, go beyond uh, in the state and were acting as the state entity and the civil society were two different entities. But Gramsci, in some way, was uh, developing already one century ago this idea of an integral state. So the fact that uh, the, 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 the society in which we live in is made of uh, a relation between political society and civil society. So the separation that we normally do between the political society and civil society is something that is, uh, uh, is an analytical tool. But organically, this is all together. Okay? The, the fact that we, we think about political society and civil society as two different realms is something that uh, helps us to understand some dynamics, but is not as it is in the reality. Because even if you, you, you can think about civil society, so normally civil, civil society is, uh, is taught as the, the realm of consent, is the, the space, is the, is the, uh, the space in which uh, different actors struggle for the hegemony, okay? so for, for the conception of the life, what is the good life. So it's uh, where uh, every day uh, there is a battle for the hegemony. Okay? And then the, in the political, so the political space is the, is the arena in which people struggle to have the power to seize uh, political institution and enforce in some way, put them force the ideas that they develop in the civil society. Um, putting this way, of course, uh, help to you to, to look at the, the economic and social dynamic and the political dynamic, but without separating them. Because, of course, it's always very complicated to, to um, uh, I mean, the, the, um, the border between civil society and, and political society is very blurred. Indeed, if you think, for example, of environmental disaster, normally in all Europe, 
the intervention is made through uh, the Department of Civil Protection. Okay? Normally the Department of Civil Protection uh, is under the head of the Minister of Defense. So it's the proper policy okay, uh, ministry. But if you go at the end of this uh, um, civil society department, you can see a lot of uh, community-based civil organizations that rescue and collaborate with the department to, to uh, for example, for the, for the rescuing people that are uh, uh, in difficulties. And, and this is interesting because you can see that even if you're pointing just to the most uh, let's say repressive, because it's the Minister of Defense, no? the, the most repressive and enforced institution, then you can see that in, in, the, in the daily operation you have a lot of co collaboration with civil society organizations, but you can see this in very different kind of um, context. Many, many times many NGOs, non-governmental organizations are funded by uh, are funded by governments and the way in which are funded are related to the way in which are in some way also um, validated by uh, the political uh, institution. So uh, again, this is something that uh, helped to you to, to, to make a, 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 a distinction that has to help to you to understand uh, the specificity of some dynamic but uh, again they operate all together in order to, 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 to create and to, to put in force the kind of policies that we uh, then experience. And just to, to show you, uh, I was following this case that was a landslide uh, in Sarno, that is a small city in, um, in the province of Naples. And after this landslide, there were like five days of normal raining, but the, the soil collapsed. Uh, well, thousand uh, million or cubic meters of soil were mobilized, destroyed uh, a lot of the building, and uh, almost uh, more than 1,200 uh, households were completely uh, were uh, all uh, affected or completely destroyed. Uh, in this event, also died uh, 160 people. Uh, so for, for the local population was a complete tragedy, of course. No? And uh, the important things to understand is that just after the, the, this event, many, uh, many citizens were, uh, of course, uh, under the very emotional uh, situation, expressing their, their own demand. No? And part of, part of their demand or the common senses that were circulating were in some way in contradiction because one of, of the common sense was okay we we have not to go back in a risky area because we know that historically all this area has been uh, affected by landslides since 300 years so since the state is able to and the statistics are able to gather information about those events so even if the last tragic event was 50 years uh, ago, so probably in the fresh memory of the population w w was lost. So one of the common sense was, okay, we have not to go back again in those parts. We have other parts of the city, probably, that we already developed. So we, uh, we w don't want to go back in the risky area. At the same time, there were also the other common sense that was, okay, but we don't want to lose the community. So this idea always, not to the attachment to the place, that we want to stay here, we cannot move. Also because when we move, you normally create uh, gettization and so on and so forth. Um, and then, of course, the other, the other uh, common sense was, where, where is the state? Where, why they don't act? Why then uh, they are not helping us? Uh, because for, for a month they were completely unable to understand where they would be uh, settled uh, and uh, in which way and so on and so far. So the, the, why, why this is important? Because um, this case uh, um, for me was able to, to, to show that uh, finally the result of the reaction to this uh, tragic event was related to the accommodation of the political 
society to the demand of civil society. Because the civil society was expressing two contradictions. So we don't want to have, uh, we don't want to live in a risky area, but we want to, uh, don't, we don't want to lose our community. So the only way to, to, to respond to this demand was to put uh, insecurity, let's say, the area. So, but how you put the insecurity in this area? You, you, they built 70,000 kilometers of canals, 70,000 kilometers of canal of cement in all the mountain. So they, then they do, did like uh, great mud, uh, great uh, swimming uh, pool for mud, let's say at the beginning of the edge of the mountain. And so, even if at the beginning the risky area was, was here, up to here, because of this uh, building, the risky area, finally, the line of the risky area go back to the mountain. And they were able to, to build again in, in the same area. But why, why it was accommodated? Why? Because in some way, this demand of civil society of the populace was in line f with uh, what uh, um, the, in the economic interest, the local economic interest, were um, were looking at. Of course, we are in the, in an area in which the, there is a great in uh, density of uh, mafia clan. And one of the main business of the, the of Camorra, that is the name of the mafia in my in, in my region, is of course cement. And the fact that you, even if you have a whole area that is affected, but of course the demand and the struggle for responding to the the state is concentrated where the event occurred. You don't intervene in all the area, but you concentrate. Okay, all the intervention, so you invest 500,000 million of euro to make canals and to save a population in an area where the soil is not more uh, there because it was collapsing. The mountain, now to, to recreate the same risk, you have to wait for 50 years of uh, also of eruption because this is a soil that coming from the eruption of the vulcan that is close to neighbor. So the, the interesting thing is that, of course, even if different solutions would be um, being envisioned, but responding to the demand of civil society was favorable to the, co the concentration of capital, of an investment in one area, and also responding to one of, uh, let's say, of uh, an actor that is not so visible in normal assembly, but is visible in the dynamic of the politi political area and civil society uh, struggle. And in this, in this way, you can say that finally the construction of canals and mud, mud uh, swimming pool in, in, all, in, in only this area, but without any intervention in all the areas around that are at least uh, uh, at the same kind of risk, is a maladaptation. But this maladaptation came from to, to responding to civil society demand. That now, this is not to blame, of course, the civil society or the, or the people there that uh, want to go back in this place, but just to show how the way in which you look at different actors then with the theory of state allow really to understand the complex dynamic uh, that make the decision happen, okay? Uh, so it's not just that you, uh, as the vulnerability study were suggesting, that you empower the civil society and then you have a good solution. It's not uh, um, sure that you will have a good solution at the end. So, um, in some way, what, what, what in, uh, the, the, the theory of state uh, give to the vulnerability studies um, give back is this idea that maladaptation is, okay, you can think about the state as the harm, no? as the enforcement of, uh, as the repressor of uh, uh, civil society, but, but many times it just accommodates the, the desire of the civil society actor. Uh, and, and of course this happened when 
the demand in some way also um, are in the same line of what is the hegemonic logic of the state nowadays. So the state nowadays what has to do? To respond to security problem and to guarantee the circulation of capital. So once that you can mobilize capitals to respond to the problem and some way also put in security the life of your uh, person, you can cover all the demand coming from the civil society. So the civil society will be accommodate if the demands that they are rising uh, also uh, are in line with the hegemonic logic of the state apparatus. Okay, so the hegemonic logic of what is the state in the, in the, in, uh, as an integral entity, as Kramsci is defending, okay? So, uh, Gramsci also, coming, even if coming from a Marxist tradition, of course, uh, and even if many Marxists want him in jail more than the fascists that put him in jail, was exactly because he was uh, really challenging the way in which also many Marxist approach uh, look at the state. No, normally, we uh, also Marxist and in, in and you find many Marxists in, in geography discipline nowadays because they were uh, they have to abandon sociology, political science, and also economy, of course. And so, if you want to have a look at the uh, Marxist, you have to go to critical geography or geography department all around the world. Um, David Harvey is one of the same, right? Um, Ma many of them were looking at the function of the state as you know as, as this aspect of uh, a branch of elite so the state the modern state is something that uh, simply respond to the elite of capitalist class and uh, to this answer uh, this is why we have to take the state or we have to uh, change it and so on and so far uh, from a, a Gramscian perspective then you 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 see that uh, the the state in um, in strict sense, so as a, the apparatus of enforcement is more complicated, it's not just working for the elite. He is, uh, is working to respond to a logic that is hegemonized in the civil society. So we as a civil society in Europe, we have accepted that the state has to retreat, that we as individual have the priority, and we as individual have to take care of our life, and if uh, the state don't enter too much in our life is better, okay? Because we uh, accept this kind of uh, general hegemony, they will also respond to our demand. Of course, we will struggle against the policies that are implemented when our demand are going against this logic, okay? The logic of accumulation, the logic of uh, growth, the logic of individual um, um, uh, welfare. But at the same time, uh, even if Gramsci seems that uh, it's even worse, no? because there is not uh, an escape from this logic, you cannot abandon the integral state because the society works in the way in which uh, uh, we were uh, experiencing this, he was also able to look at uh, uh, the capacity then of create or a, a counter-hegemonic logic. So the counter-hegemonic logic for Gramsci was first of all to, to behave and uh, to practice in the civil society um, a different kind of demand, create a different kind of logic and then this logic will be applied also to, um, to, uh, to the um, state apparatus in strict sense. Okay? So this is just, uh, I have 40 minutes of presentation, no? And still 10 minutes then. Um, so it, this was just to introduce the way in which I arrived to, to think about theory of states. And, and I was working on this case study that was in my region, uh, and same time, it was 2012, and I have worked for two years, and then uh, the paper was out three years after, and I was working at the same time to the degrowth vocabulary that you have to uh, see. But in some ways, uh, um, it's a collection in which uh, is, that, um, is, is trying to politicize the environmentalism and uh, the environmental demand and the social ecological transformation in the society. But was was uh, pretty nice for me then 
on one side I'm, I'm in some way addressing the vulnerab uh, vulnerability adaptability scholarship to say ah you don't have a theory of state what are you doing you are you know you are not able really to to understand the dynamic that you want to describe and then I look at my book and there was no state inside so it's, it was a tragedy for me at the end of the end of these different parts I realized that um, among the many entries that we have in the book, we don't have any uh, en uh, entry on the state. And so uh, this is why then I, I start to think how, how the, 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 the practices and the policies that we suggest as the growthers should be uh, in some way um, uh, supported by a, a framework, a theory of state that uh, can help us to, to move forward. So just to introduce a little bit to th those that um, they never know, uh, have heard something about degrowth. So this is the complicated model that we propose. The model is uh, we, have, we have a society of uh, growth. Of course, growth is more of the same. So when you have the same of the same, that is what we are experiencing as uh, European countries since 2012 now the same or the same, so a, a small amount of growth per year. Uh, and then you have recession during the period of 2008 up to 2010, it was the recession, so less of the same, so no, no growth in our society. And then we were saying, that, okay, the growth is simply different. We, we, we are trying to, to say and doing, and doing something different. It's not just about recession. This is one of the critiques that we normally receive. No, is that okay? We are already degrowing, uh, so there is no problem. We are already in the society of degrowth. But degrowth is not having recessions. It is not a society of growth that aspires to have more and more, that is not able to to get there. And of course, there is this idea of the transformation of the society, the this expressed of this transformation of elephant. We don't have anything against the elephant, and of course, if we start to present this in India, we should change with other ones. <laughs> we have a problem with the population there, but it was just to, as a representation. So the, this idea of transformation of uh, a, a social metabolic system that is an elephant in a, uh, in a snake, okay? But then if you want to transform really, how, how you can just think about economic activity, even if they are social, social or solidarity activity, or if they are urban gardening and so on and so forth. How you transform really this elephant in a snail if you don't think how this civil society activity interact with the political realm, okay? The, this is also important because uh, um, in some way, uh, now the, if you really want to transform, for example, Donna Haraway, that is one of the uh, main prominent feminists in the USA, uh, for avoiding to, to speak about capitalism, he say this, uh, um, uh, um, this monster in expansion in which we live in. Okay? So there is a monster in expansion that we want to transform in some way, but we need not only to think about uh, activity uh, and changing of lifestyle, but of course uh, to intervene uh, in the also in the political realm. But we cannot intervene in the political realm just to list listing a series of possible policies. No, we have to think how we also change the dynamic inside the uh, the political realm. And indeed, uh, of course, the growth is. Uh, is perceived as a, a critique of uh, the ideology of growth. So this simply idea that you can say to your mother or your aunt, this, this idea that uh, we want, mm, in order to stay better or well, you need more and more. So it's pretty simple, but it's the logic that uh, mobilizes each of us. And now that Christmas is coming more and more, uh, and and then it's so in this sense, it's a critique of the, the system and the dynamic and the Germany in which we live in, but at the same time is also a series of discourses and practices to, to change and to transform uh, the, the place in which we live. Um, and and this, also, this transformation is made on, on, also on, on, uh, on an idea that uh, we want to occupy less space just to allow some 
uh, other uh, human to occupy uh, uh, the space and also no human. Uh, um, Recently, uh, uh, some activists, some indigenous people, Mapuche, feminist Mapuche, uh, came to Madrid to explain how the, ma the, the father of Macri is, uh, that is one of the main uh, farmer of uh, farmer exporter of uh, soil uh, of soy is uh, making their life impossible because it's extracting all the water that is necessary and uh, as we know I mean the, the most of water available water in the world is exactly between Chile and Argentina is where the Mapuche lives and the extraction of soy for our uh, for okay Western uh, style of life is um, making the, the the life impossible for Mapuche, and this is in this sense. No, this we are occupying more and more space, uh, making uh, their life impossible. But if also no, when, on, on the other side we address policies, and there are different policies that I cannot go uh, uh, deepening. But went exactly because there was. Uh, at, um, uh, I think two, year, two years ago there were the national election in Spain so we want to address the, the Podemos party and other parties to see if they could be interested in many of the, in some of the policies they want to suggest and then we translate these in different languages uh, because we are interested for different po parties in, in different countries in Europe but again uh, in some way if you there is all these dynamics, but uh, there is not any the theory of the growth, theory of state in the growth. So there is a, a it, recently, for example, there, there, there was published in Ecological Economics a, a review article uh, on all the publication from the 2012 up to the 2015, and you can see that the first three years were all about conceptual say normative claims but these normative claims were about you know culture economy uh, policies but not about the state okay so this is very interesting of course here the also the modeling the modeling are addressing policies that can be mo modeled by uh, uh, um, using um, also um, political institution as one of the actors in the modeling, but of course we don't really have uh, a description of this interaction. Hall, for example, another recent is a forthcoming uh, revision uh, made by Callis in the um, annual review of environmental uh, resources, where they they look at uh, you know the studies of economic stabi stability. Now we, as the growth, because of the modeling, we can say there is a stability also in a society in which. Uh, there is no growth, then the ethnography of different societies that are acting not according to the value of growth, that are working. Um, now there is a reflection on technology, how the technology, the recent uh, special double the special issue on technology and, um, and the growth was published also and related to the democracy, also the relation of the digital platform that are used by the direct democracy in many parts of Europe. Uh, in Spain, but no, not only. Uh, no, but also in this revision, no, no, mm, no reference to to the state was uh, well done. No, in some way the elephant in the room was still the, this theory of state. What do we do with this? No, because it's a it's a sort of uh, it's a sort of taboo that we are in some way uh, um, uh, working with, and probably the the taboo. We can describe a little bit the taboo uh, looking at another study that uh, two sociologists did uh, in the, during the conference of uh, Leipzig in which there was three ta almost 3,000 participants. So the, bi the biggest, uh, luckily, the biggest, so also the last big conference of the group uh, in which there were 3,000 participants, they were uh, clustering different kind of actors. And then, then you have the sufficiency-oriented critics of civilization, you have immanent, I cannot go deeply, but after, if you have any questions to, to elaborate this, 
categorization we can discuss. Then you have immanent reformers, voluntary pacifist idealists, modernist, rationalist, alternative practical left. It's pretty interesting that the least the first and the last category are pretty much anarchist-led kind of attitude. Okay, so of course there is a taboo because inside our community there is very different political uh, ideology that is played and still is not played out uh, openly. No, we know that there is this influence of anarchism for many, uh, but then you have the reformers. Of course, you have many people that are. Uh, traditional related to you know political activism in the 70s in which you know there is no taboo of saying okay I, I go to the uh, municipal government I try to change uh, the thing that I could or I can um, take in this kind of power and the same then again we uh, explain a little bit the taboo but this was about you know the uh, the English kind of um, uh, literature and movement, of course. So, uh, in order to, to f this is the, the the French version of the book. So when when we translate the book when in French, the French community said, "You don't tell the state, are you crazy? Or what they are doing?" So they they want a, a, it's the only version in which there is uh, reasoning of uh, uh, on the state. So. Uh, Again, perhaps the French are on the front, uh, on the front of uh, you know the reflection on uh, on, uh, on the, the croissants. And what one of the main argument of Polarier inside the book and inside the the, the brief entry is exactly the, the problem under theorization of the state. There is a lot of theory on uh, as as uh, I explained before, and uh, also now in the review of Kalis uh, is emerging on you know the cultural aspect, anthropological aspect, the economic aspect, but still on the political state aspect, uh, we don't reflect enough. Uh, and it, what he say normally the people that in French were publishing on, on this uh, aspect of the state and the growth were. Uh, making main four critiques to the to the state. Still, we don't have a kind of theory of state in in the French uh, uh, field, but a sort of normative uh, discussion and claims against or pro-state. So the, your critiques of a state as an oppressive actor that is very uh, well known uh, as an ideological apparatus. Uh, uh, as an actor uh, that uh, in some way fosters productivism and uh, also the state as a heteronomous institution. This comes from Castoriadis' influences. There was a, well, he was an economist but then became a philosopher. He's a, a Greek person that was thinking about heteronomy uh, toward autonomy. So Castoriadis was thinking of institution that autonomous institution are the institution in which we collectively participate in order to institute it, okay? And we can change it. Uh, the institution are uh, heteronomic when, of course, it's impossible to change it. In some ways, what now the Catalans are experiencing about the constitution of Spain, no? The, uh, of course, there was a, a specific moment in which the constitution of Spain was written, and this moment was uh, the moment in which was di died uh, uh, Franco, and of course the apparatus, the power, the power of that moment, uh, in some way, guarantee uh, some some power to the to uh, himself, but also to the to the king. Indeed, now if you want to change the the constitution in Spain, you have to ask to the, the king to see. So it's practically impossible because the Catalan want a republic, so they should ask, please king, if I see me a law that uh, say that you are out of my country. So, to me. so in this sense is a heteronomous institution. Okay, so the way in which the institution are make heteronomous is the, uh, they make impossible to the people that are part of this institution to change it. Okay. So uh, and then a part of this book, uh, of this entry, this entry were coming from a reflection in I think in 2000 and, uh, 2006 was published uh, the, this issue of Entropia that is one of the main 
uh, journal that uh, De Grotter uh, were, um, were issuing in France. And one of the issues was on La Decroissance et l'État, uh, and was a, a, series, a series of reflection on the state. So basically, you have three main uh, sections, which there is the critical modern state, the transformation of, of the modern state, and the break with the modern state. So they are, as you can see, there is still, again, very different kind of approaches and reflection on it. And this, uh, in some way, realized the fact that even if if you just come back a little bit on the uh, on the period 2012 and 2015, in which there was a lot of publication on normative claims uh, of the growth that were related to economy or cultural aspect, anthropology, and so on and so, and so far, we basically agreed on that. No, so there is a, 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 a sort of basic understanding of what the growth is about on this aspect. Um, that was normative at the beginning, but now is the pre-analytic of any kind of new modeling, new kind of application, and so on. Far. But now, still nowadays, we don't have a shared agreement in the degrowth community between an activist practitioner, because in this case, are not only, in, as in many cases in degrowth, it's not only about scholar. Right? For example, one of the most interesting for me uh, reflection on the state was a. Uh, of a director of a theater company uh, that was reflecting about uh, you know cultural uh, production and relation to the to state um, and it was very interesting because it was exactly reflecting to the fact that uh, basically the state is also is not just uh, an apparatus but is a, is a, an entity made of rituality and this rituality is very important no? also for example the signature of the king on a law is part of the rituality of the, that we accept. Uh, and, and this is very interesting to understand that uh, up to now uh, um, there is not an agreement. No? And so I, I'm in some way going in this line of uh, there, is, there are disagreement among several claims, and then there is also recognition of lack of uh, um, application. So, uh, what I, I'm, I'm doing is something very complicated because it's, uh, it's a terrain in which there is no agreement, so I'm moving uh, step in a terrain that is uh, difficult, no? uh, in some way. Uh, and um, the way in which I, I want to do is, and, and now I'm, uh, I'm ending, is the, the reflecting on how exactly the daily encountering uh, with, the, with the state is perceived. No? And so we, we do it uh, in different contexts. So every day if we are parents, uh, we go to the school with our children, so we enter in uh, the political domain of public school, for example. Or, for example, if you are, again, parents, you used to go to the hospital very often because also in this period yes, uh, your children will be here and so on. And so this is another encounter, no? the public health, the national public health is another un encounter with the, uh, the state apparatus. So the way in which I want to look at uh, how the new, the new dynamic that are emerging inside the, uh, uh, the city, in this case is Barcelona, are changing the way in which political um, activity um, and policies are implemented in different uh, space. So I just make two examples and I, I finished. One example is uh, on, on your left, you have a, uh, this is a photograph in which you cannot see the face of the sheet and this is why I use it. It's a, a, um, um, it's a um, care children group, so now there are like 115 up to 200 of this kind of organization of parents stay together to take care of their children. Okay, Is they, they are not going in the private space nor in the public space for different reasons. They decide to have a self-arrangement of uh, the, the care of their children. Uh, what is interesting is that normally th th those experiences are between zero and three years or of the children, so normally when uh, there is not uh, any obligation of the public system to give you for free uh, the access of, to education. Indeed, you pay a lot for the public uh, kindergarten in, in Barcelona, it's around four, 400 euros per month. Um, 
the, what in, what is interesting to on the other side the, this photograph is the the photo in which my children are going to school it's a public school they, they are like seven years old and five years old it's a public school even if you can see they are these spaces are not spaces of the normal class that we experience at least my, myself when I was young is a space in which the, in which they are freely to move and so on and so forth this is a public school what is interesting to me is how this experience of self-organization at a different level then change the way in which the public school is imagined okay so the way in which the education is processed after so this family of course they are experiencing uh, they are creating institutions, they are creating norms to take care of their children and so on, but, but then they occupy the public space when their children start to be on the age of, you know, going into school and change the way in which the public school is taught, okay? So in this kind of, and, and this again, uh, school is very important in terms of production of imaginary, in, te in terms of production of ideology and so on and so forth. I don't have to stress this aspect, no? This is important because the school is the one of the space in which uh, uh, also Bourdieu was criticizing, you know, as the apparatus of uh, the ideology, okay? The way in which we, cre we are created and we grow up is exactly through the educational school. So if we occupy the school in a way in which then what we have to do is not uh, um, learn specific things related to uh, productivity in the long run, but for example, to is more based on uh, the emotion of the children, the choice of themselves, to make them autonomous, to make them able to decide, and so on and so far. Of course, is a changing of how the political, uh, the public school is imagined. But why I use this example? Because exactly when I was thinking about the presentation, I got a chat on the uh, on the WhatsApp of the school in which now, because this, this was an experiment of 10 years ago. Uh, so the children now are going in the high school, okay? The first are going in the high school. Of course, these parents are making a movement to have a high school in line with uh, the same pedagogy that they used in the <coughs> public school. And they convinced that Colau because again, the political space is now occupied by those people that are related to our way of life and the way in which you want to change your life. So Ada Colau and the government, local government, accept it. So they say, okay, I will invest <coughs> part of uh, public money to make a high school that uh, will have this kind of um, approach. But then, now, because we have election in Catalonia, as you know, the, 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 the 21st of December, they are many tradition, they are attacking this decision saying, ah, it's an elite school, so uh, you are creating a, a space in which uh, you, uh, there are privileged uh, children and so on and so forth. This is interesting because for me, it's, now is the moment in which you can break the way in which we imagine the school. Because we can say, no, we don't want to have an elite. We want all the school being like that because we, this is a public school. It's not a private school where we go and do things for our elite children. And the last example, and then I close, is about public health, no? I mean, the, the case of education is very interesting because Ivan Illich, for example, that is one of the most radical uh, thinker uh, and pioneer of the growth, uh, wrote a book that was called uh, The Schooling Society. So, okay, we, so the, he was uh, claiming on the process of completely uh, destroying the way in which the public uh, schools are, are taught, and so creating a process of learning in different ways. And the same is about health. He wrote a, a, a book uh, that was called Limit to Medicine. Limit to Medicine and uh, the, the, the nemesis, uh, nemesis of public health. So the, the, the fact that, uh, and this is not, for example, Foucault was also no, describing how the modern ide ideology and uh, uh, biocontrol was through the way in which medicine was getting the power on our body, on the, on the way in which we can think about our health, and so on and so forth. So this is why I'm putting here another example. This is a, a cooperative uh, of health uh, that, again, is based in Barcelona. It's a cooperative which is part of the social economy and the fair economy of uh, Barcelona that now increasingly occupy the main space. So in Barcelona, they don't win the, the best 
Christmas plays so in Europe, but in the main square is now not the uh, sky pool, um, pooling that was um, just three years ago, but there is now a fail of social economy, okay? In which you can, many times, one of the problems that when I uh, went there two years ago, that was the first time with my children, the problem was that you cannot buy things because sometimes, you know, social economy is also about services. So they are just showing how they operate, but they are not selling anything. So, ah, this is fail in which you cannot buy. Yeah, exactly, it's about different logic. But again, this, they are also part of this social economy cooperative and this is again is a, 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 a little bit more complicated of the example of the schooling because this is of course is a private cooperative. It's a cooperative, so it's it's okay, but it's a private cooperative. I'm a member of the, this cooperative. I'm a member not as a of course as a doctor, but as a user. And what is interesting is that uh, um, this cooperative, for example. Uh, is not trying to think about uh, indifferently the health. So it's not uh, giving to, to me the tool to, uh, to also to take uh, care about my health and health of my children, um, but it's also trying to um, penetrate uh, the, the public health system. So one of the services, for example, that uh, give the cooperative is the, um, is the assistance to the pregnancy. Okay, all the process of parents having children, and they also assist uh, people that want to give birth in the house. Okay? Uh, but what is, what is in, uh, interesting is, is that they are also trying to change the way in which now giving birth in the hospital are medicalized. So um, we, we, we had an agreement with one of the, the main public uh, hospital in Barcelona uh, that uh, agree with us that uh, if there are people that want to be assist during the pregnancy by them and not by you know the med medicalization process of giving birth in the public health uh, system now they can so in this way you are also changing again one of the main aspects of you know the first step in the or against the medicine power, that is exactly, you know, the medicalization of the pregnancy is one of the biggest problems, I think, uh, of the medicine. And the way in which you change this in the public space is also very important. These are all only two examples in which I'm interested in to look at how self-organized system or cooperative system uh, infiltrate the political space, so the way the space in which you know norms, regulation are made, in order to change the way in which we regulate and we norms those aspects of life. Thanks, sorry. Critics, remember for the